In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, here we are, already past the middle of July, and I want to say to Summer, slow down. I haven't gotten into my summer mode yet. It's more than halfway over. I really just love this time of year. I love my garden, you too. The flowers growing in pots on my deck, around the yard, the birds, especially the hummingbirds, the chipmunks, even when they dig up those same flower pots. A good book on a summer afternoon, iced tea or lemonade, saying morning prayer while I'm listening to the birds in the trees above my head. Praying or just thinking about stuff or nothing at all. All of these things, or your own version, we need to do from time to time to refocus and recharge, to keep us centered and to give us the strength and energy to go back out into the world, our challenging world. We are not always successful in this. In fact, our busy lives, daily events in the world around us, and in our own families and with our friends, tend to keep us from times of rest and the reflection that we need. That is what vacation time is about. And we all need to find ways to do that, even if they're small, but regular interludes, a pause, some breathing space to rest. Jesus and his disciples were not very successful in finding a quiet place to rest and pray, as we read a moment ago. The demands of their ministry was so great, and the crowds were so pressing with so many needs. But in all that Jesus did, and in all that he taught his disciples, he did with compassion. Compassion, the word comes from the Latin, to suffer with. So Jesus saw the crowds coming to him with many needs, bringing the sick for healing, the destitute, the homeless, some with mental illness, some who needed food. But they also hungered to hear his words and his teaching, and he had compassion for them. He felt their suffering. For they were, he said, like sheep without a shepherd, And so he put off his own retreat time and began to heal them and to teach them many things. Now notice that he did eventually go off and pray, either alone or with his disciples. But his compassion for his suffering with those who flocked to him caused him to stop and help, to teach, to heal, to feed the 4,000 and the 5,000. I remember in those texts, his disciples being overwhelmed and asking, how can we feed so many? We can't go back into town and buy food so late in the day. We only have a few loaves and some fishes. And of course, Jesus knew what he needed to do. and They were all fed. But he could not do everything. He could do something. And it would be a piece of helping bring the kingdom of God closer to now. He could see the grand plan, or at least parts of it, and he knew who he was and what he needed to do with the brief time that he had. His compassion extended to those who followed him and would be his successors in carrying on his work of redemption and healing, his disciples, and and also the greater group of people who followed him. We are inheritors of those disciples and followers. And we too are bound to lead with compassion as he modeled for us. Inherent in that is the need to step back from time to time, to rest and refresh so that we can step back in and give the world our best. We do that in community with each other. And together we can do so much 
to grow the kingdom of God. A colleague of mine shared this reflection with me recently. It was originally part of a homily given by the Catholic Cardinal Dearden in 1979 and quoted by Pope Francis in 2015, but I thought it was so right on that I wanted to share this portion with you. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom lies beyond us. We plant the seeds that one day grow. We water seeds that, already, that are already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need future development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something, and to do it well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are the workers, not the master builder. We are prophets of a future, not our own. So we take this piece of wisdom and we think about how we have been called to be and do within this faith community of St. Mark's and in our various places out in the wider community in the world. We use this glorious time of summer to pause and reflect on how we use our compassion and fit into the larger construct of ministry as it plays out in our individual lives and how we work with how we empower, and how we love those whom we do ministry with in this parish community. No one person does it alone. We do it as a team. We empower and support each other. May you find some pieces of July and August and beyond that give you joy and peace and refreshment for your body and soul. Amen.